Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to introduce a new type of habitat for the moon at this point and I get to this particular habitat by typing regolith into the search field lunar regolith surface base. So here we see a fairly simple model is derived from the Dynetics lander uh, nothing particularly fancy it's four meters in diameter eight meters long and well it doesn't look like much. We've got a special set of landing legs for it and that goes like that and this looks like, uh, well, let's see, deploy legs. So it's just like that, very simple. And so what's the fun feature about this? Pile regolith. Yes. So regolith, uh, the idea is that you're going to use the regolith to shield the hab from radiation. And so uh, the hab will be oriented so that this is the sun's path and because the moon is mostly lined up with the ecliptic it's that's not got vary by season or anything very much and so yep uh, the sun's path will be like this and so the radiation will mostly come in like that of course there are exposed areas for cosmic rays and stuff like that so it's not perfect I thought about covering up the back end but the way this works is these are all hidden inside the body of this uh, before they appear and that way it allows the colliders to work so let's test this out on the launch pad first uh, I better check and I hope I've got some people in there it has room for two it's meant to be their uh, sort of home on the moon they've got supplies and everything I have to work on a logistics system uh, yeah, we'll see about how that all works out. I don't want to use the USI one. I mean, hooking it up to USI one might be an option. Uh, of course, I could just add a little tag that says, if you have USI, you can use that. That's a whole complicated thing, though, but we'll see. Okay, so here it is. And basically, the idea is the forward part is an airlock portion, and then the rest of it is living space for two. The interior I just made as the, uh, I just copied the Mark 1 crew cabin, so that's the interior. It doesn't look quite right, but we'll ignore that for now. I'm actually sort of surprised the little regolith chunks don't appear here. But, okay, we'll have a Jeb EV out. Oh, on the other side, there we go. Uh, still sliding down. I tried to fix the ladder like that, but all right. Um, should be able to grab the door. Uh, yeah, just barely, uh, without any additional ladder. But hopefully in lunar gravity it's easier to go up, I don't know. Anyway, so first of all, we're going to test this. We're going to walk around it. There's no actual collider on the on those landing legs. Uh, there is at the base and on the foot pads. Okay, so we can walk around here. But then, if I switch to this, and I say pile regolith, first of all, it takes some time. I made made it staged. That's why they're in chunks, and they're all stored inside here. Okay, so now, in theory, when Jeb goes at them, they're collidable. So they have their own colliders, too. They're not... Gonna be in he actually he actually knocked it a little bit. Oh, he can turn it. So uh, if it turns out that you haven't got it oriented properly on the moon, Jeb can move it, even though it's seven tons. And actually, the regolith will be heavier. Regolith is actually not that dense, it seems. And incidentally, if you're wondering if the hab can bear regolith on top, it can bear a lot more than this, because uh, it's, it's structurally made for bearing the atmospheric pressure inside it turns out that uh, it can bear quite a lot of tons on the outside when you think about atmospheric pressure it's 14.7 pounds per square inch if you can imagine 14.7 pounds per square inch that's a lot <laughs> that's actually a lot of force and on the moon you would have to have i mean because it's only one six gravity that's a lot of material that you need to pile in order to get that much so let's make sure Jeb can get back in here I didn't put a handle on the door yet I could do a lot of things but I was focused on the rocks let's face it can you can you get in 
I don't know. Oh, there we go. I had to stop moving forward. All right. Okay, so that's the idea. But now we have to see if we can deploy it with the orange, right? And it's 7.5 tons, so it's a little bit over what I was looking for. And as a result, I'll probably underfuel the food, water, and oxygen uh, so that it's only halfway. Right now, it doesn't even say how much we've got there. It says pre launch vessel, even though we don't have any launch clamps on. But yeah, so we I think we've got about two months worth inside of food, water, and oxygen for two. And so we'll cut that in half and we'll go with that. All right. So on to the launch. Okay, we're operating off of launch clamps and on the landing legs because otherwise it'll replenish the food, water, and oxygen and nitrogen, which I didn't want it to do. Uh, but with that, throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. And it'll automatically start going up once uh, the engine thrust is sufficient. Uh, off we go. So, raise legs. The legs will create drag otherwise, they do have colliders as well. Alrighty, we'll see how it goes. Again, I'll be expending the first stage in this case. Uh, we do have MLI layers, good, <laughs> just checking that I didn't forget that. And on the orange, also we have some. Okay, throttling down. Okay, separation and ignition and fairing set and throttle up and we have RCS, let's enable the RCS and well actually you know what we might want to hold off on that because the RCS is useful and these can handle roll anyway if necessary. Obviously, normally the base module would not be launched with crew. <laughs> That's not how it's supposed to be. But uh, we wanted to simplify the test out to see how things would work. So, And once again, this uh, hab was sized with the landing legs to fit a 5 meter fairing. You can sort of tell that by the orange as well. So it's all meant to be able to fit a 5 meter fairing. And I thought it'd be reasonably good living for two people. I didn't want to cram any more than that in there. It has a fuel cell built in, but that won't last too long. That's for emergency purposes. We'll need some other power solution. And that gets down to the logistics system and how resources we passed around and recycled and everything. Okay, 265 by 187. So let's plot for the moon. I'll just have MechJeb do it this time. Okay. I don't know if we're too, too early or not, but ignition. 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, we are too early. Um, let's shut down and wait a bit. Okay, well, fuel seems settled. Ignition again. Again, we're going to have this upper stage help us make orbit around the moon. Okay, a little bit too far there. Alright, uh, well, I'll want to keep a close eye on the hydrazine again, so I'll just manually turn. We only have 770 meters per second because the payload's heavier with all the food, water, and oxygen, and it's just heavier. I could have justified making the hab lighter, but judging from the other modules like the Mark II lander can and stuff like that, this seems about right. And, you know, I've also done other calculations. It's possible that it wouldn't be delivered with the supplies at all, and that would help. The supplies are really pushing it over the seven tons that we were supposed to have. I'm just gonna go ahead and start a fuel cell. And presumably these HABs will actually be delivered into a polarish orbit and land at the water rich, water not really abundant either, anyway. 
the water present poles. We're relying on the fuel cells and not the not the solar panels on the orange for power because I don't think the solar panels on the orange are good enough to power the hab anyway. And the hab takes too much power. Now I have no idea whether my rock piles are actually a match for the texture of the moon here. I just did what I could. We'll see how it looks. We've had some boil off. We followed it in. I didn't uh, cheat this time. <laughs> uh, we've let the boil off happen uh, as it does. So we'll see what the results are. We had the MLI layers on, or at least some MLI layers. The boil off on the liquid oxygen has actually replenished our oxygen a little bit more than we needed it. Okay, there's the moon and the earth. Okay, ignition. And we need to make sure it doesn't try and use this. And also, I'd like to top that off if we can quickly enough. <laughs> okay. And we'll expend the hydrazine here. Have a little bit too much liquid oxygen. Could have used that. Um, keep keep transferring that hydrogen though. All right. Um, we need a little bit of hydrazine to keep things steady while the orange does its business. So that's what we've got. Kill rotation. And orange time. Okay, we have connected. And this can now decouple. And off it goes. And back to the orange. We are good to go. We should probably lower our orbit right now. So retrograde. Controlling from here still. Activating main engines and burn. Okay, well that should be a landing approach path. And we'll be aiming somewhere around where that periapsis is. Maybe here. Maybe here. <laughs> Not the best uh, solar power situation. But we'll land where we land, okay? So. Well, we're getting some light on the body here. Okay, and there's the sun. Eight minutes. I don't know if I trust that, trust that, but we'll see. Because the suicide burn countdown is going to go down anyway. Alright, we'll try for this area here. Checking our balance. There's a little bit of a yaw thing. Seems okay for now. Probably can focus on that. Of course, this isn't landing at a precise location next to other modules or anything like that. That's a whole other business too. We do need the area around the hab to be fairly flat because otherwise the colliders on the regolith are going to collide with the terrain and they sort of go out really quickly. The The collider on the rock portions uh, do not go all the way down to the surface. They're just low enough so that a Kerbal will collide with them but they don't actually uh, go down to where it's visibly there. So I created some space just in case we were not on level terrain. So that's okay for it to clip a bit, but still needs to be reasonably flat. Of course, this is also practice with the orange, which I will need. The more practice I have, the less margin I need for doing these things. Already it's pretty tight though, I don't think I can improve too much. 
Okay, switching to SAS. SAS is more wiggly, I think. I think I'll try kill rotation on the smart ASS instead. I think that's better. Oop. Oh, okay, it's going wiggly. Okay, slow down, slow down. Oh, the vertical speed. Come on. Okay, there we go. Uh, uh, I think we can just touch down. Okay, all right. As RCS off. Okay. And getting ready to undock. Undock RCS on and go. Uh, this is controlling the wrong way. Um, control from here. And we'll go into retrograde orbit, which is what we were in in the first place. Uh, I, I, I thought I had kill rotation. Oh god, what? Uh, do, do, RCS. <laughs> Whoa. That was dangerous. I thought I had RCS on. Shoot. Well, there's our new little base. Not gonna be a permanent fixture right now. Okay, yeah, and that's plenty of spare for landing at a more precise location instead of an arbitrary location. Hopefully, hopefully that's plenty of spare. And let's go back to the landed ship. Okay, so here we are. And, well, let's pile on the regolith and see if that works and how well it matches things. Plop, 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 plop. And there it is. Okay. Looking nice and comfy on the surface. And let's get some better sunlight. So we, we've got the fuel cells on. Let's wait a few days as the sun rotates. Oh, it's going into the dark. Well, okay. Oh, it's gonna run out of power before the sun comes back, huh? <laughs> Whoops! Uh, okay, well, well, I just want to take a look at it, okay? So we're gonna cheat infinite electricity for now. The liquid hydrogen is boiling, boiling off way too fast. Oh, the food is going down too. Okay, but uh, we've got some sunlight. Oh, that's not quite the orientation I was looking for then, huh? Doesn't quite match the surface, really. This, it needs to be darker. It's got a little bit too much sheen on it. Anyway, I'm not going to link this just yet. I don't know, even know. Do you guys think this is a good idea or is this a silly idea? I mean... Was, is this a worthwhile venture, or do you, or what kind of, oh my god, I have a problem. It's seven tons! How did him climbing roll it over? Hold on. Can't roll over again. What is the meaning of this? Okay, I need I need some help. How do we stop that from happening? That's not supposed to happen. Well, I was not expecting that. So like, okay, so hold on. Uh, wait, can we go the other way? But there's a limit to how big the ladder is. But if I, we go this way, it's gonna roll over onto him. Okay, we'll have to start right at the top, and then try and knock it down. Pull, tilt, okay, go down. Roll, roll. Okay, that's not working. Maybe it's easier with the regolith, I don't know. Come on, come on, you can do it. Oh, God. 
Room it there. Flop. <laughs> um, well, I, I think I've got a problem. I don't know. This is strange. I made sure they had colliders so that physics wouldn't be weird, game. Why are you making physics weird? I don't, even, I don't have any reaction wheel. I didn't think we would need a reaction wheel. Uh, so, yeah, okay. So there's a bit of a problem with the way the ladder works and trying to have the hab be stable. So suggestions on that would be helpful. Comments, analysis in general, uh, suggestions, yeah. So I'm not linking this just yet. Uh, we were going to troubleshoot some of this. But with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.